<laughs> UConn's chances, seriously, this isn't a homer yeah. question. Right. Like, they're the best team. They're not a homer question, but it is homer. Yeah, question. but do you like UConn's chances to repeat? UConn's the best team in college basketball. They've proven it over the length of the season. Everyone's getting all caught up about the bracket. Oh, the bracket. They got the toughest bracket. I talked to Danny Hurley yesterday Coach on my way year. into the city. You know what? The way Danny Hurley works, this is a perfect bracket for him because he doesn't care about the next game. He only cares about what's in front of him. Plus, it gives him a cause. Okay. Danny Hurley lives for a chip on his shoulder. He needs a cause. His team, the most connected team in college basketball, play fast, play slow, play in the post, play off the perimeter. This is fine. They are the best team in the country. Now, look, it's hard to win it back-to-back, but they're built for this. It's fine to say they got the toughest bracket, though. It is what it is. I mean, never has a number one seed had to beat three conference tournament champions, yet alone in their own region. So Illinois, one of the hottest teams in the country right now. Right. Iowa State just smacked Houston by 30 points 30. in the Big 12 championship. Yeah, what was that? That matters. What, what, what the hell's what? going on with that? But here's the deal. When you get to the second round, you're playing someone good. You get to the third that's, round, you're going to play a team that's won 30 games, that expects to win. It's all about identity. If you can impose your identity on a game, like you say, Iowa State, they can impose Can Iowa identity. State win a championship? Can Texas A&M impose Can Iowa identity. State win a championship? No, because they got to go through UConn. But they, if they were in another bracket, you might pick them to go to the Final Four. If they're going against North Carolina, Iowa you might State, pick Iowa State. Look, when I'm Iowa saying, State used to play, it's armed combat. It's like it's a violent game. They don't play basketball. They play a violent basketball game. I think the big question for the Big 12 is how the game is going to be officiated because the Big 12 is the most physical game team, uh, league in college basketball. Yeah. But in the NCAA tournament, so, how will the game be officiated? I got well, UConn coming out, but I think the road is tough. I, think I mean, I, they, if you played against FAU and SDSU, they were in the Final Four last year. Right. I said you got Illinois, you got Iowa State, you got Auburn that plays 10 guys. They That's just right. won the yeah. SEC championship. It's, it's okay to say, say they got a hard region. Coming out, you mean winning it all, or are you just. Oh, I got UConn winning it. I got UConn winning the national championship as well. But Shannon, go ahead, get, get in here, Shannon. What's your thoughts? Man, when I looked at it, I was disappointed. Because you look at North Carolina, they get NC State and they lose by 10. And we look at Iowa State beat Houston, who was the number one seed, and they got beat by, like you said, 30. And everybody was getting – I'm like, well, hold on, what is going on? See, that's mm-hmm. a red flag to me. I don't know how you guys, Jay, you and uh, Coach Greenberg, I don't know how you look at it. But it's really disappointing to me to see some of these teams that we thought was going to be better, especially conference, because everything else had gotten moved out of the way. The Duke had gotten moved out of the way for North Carolina. And you let your guard down and NC State beat you. And you you see Arizona get beat. You see Houston get dismantled. So that's concerning for me. So I think by, by elimination, I would have to lean towards UConn because they were the only team that we expected to be where they are that took care of business once they got to where they yep. needed to go. Reach. Yeah, but here's the, the upsets in the conference tournament. They're no Reach, different than though. the rest of the season. All season long, we've seen ranked teams beat by unranked teams. All season long, guys have had a hard time of validating wins. This is just a microcosm of what the tournament's going to be, except one or two teams will separate themselves because they're more consistent and can validate wins. I'm looking at the South region here. I've lost. I, I, maybe Houston can make up for it. I, I, there's just a difference between losing and getting your ass kicked. Mm-hmm. They got their ass kicked. Like the Houston Cougars, man, I mean, they, I went from thinking they had a shot to, you know, to win the yes. national title to just looking. I looked at them, and I'm like, Lord. I mean, that, this is kind of beach down where you, you end up punch drunk and you don't necessarily recover until months later. I think that's what Houston is suffering. I'm looking at this South region here. Jay, I need your help on this. I'm looking at Texas A&M. Yep. I'm looking at Texas A&M. I'm looking. Listen, I don't, I don't have that. I've never had that much faith in Duke this year. I never had that much faith in them. No. Wasn't surprising me at all that they lost AC in the ACC tournament to North Carolina. Wasn't surprising to me at all that, that I'm not, not to North Carolina, but they lost an ACC tournament. Yes, they State. lost the season State, finale yeah. to North Carolina. Wasn't surprising to me at all. I don't like what I've seen from them. Looking at NC State, you know, you had a good season, stuff like that, but they got to run into Kentucky. I got to pay attention to stuff like that. I'm just looking at some of these teams in the South region, and I think to me it's the weakest looking region, to be honest with you, because I think Houston, who is supposed to be the creme de la creme in that spot, Mm -hmm. I think they might get taken out in the second round. Which Mm -hmm. one seed has the easiest path? I would go with Purdue. I would say say Purdue and down the Midwest. And here's something just for us to think about. Yeah. Because we keep talking a lot in college basketball, you know, doing NBA with you guys and coming down doing college basketball, doing both. We always talk about legacy and what's that mean. So I look at People that have been two-time national player of the year, right? Or three. Bill Wall, Ralph Sampson. I know Ralph Sampson never won a championship, right? Right. But we exactly. could have a situation um, in which we have Zach Eady, 
back-to-back -back National Player of the Year, yes. who has never been to the second weekend of the tournament. Wow. Mm. What are we? What are we going to say that means for college basketball? That's an if. That, that is an if. That, but that, an if. there's pressure on Purdue. You got beat by what do you 16. Mean, what does it say about college basketball? I don't understand. What do you mean? So, like, we, I know it's his individual legacy. award, but like his Zach Eady's his, legacy. Right. Right. Back-to-back -back National Player of the Year? Right. You're in the same category with Ralph Sampson? Yeah. Or yeah. Bill Walton? They are built you can for get, this stuff. I, I, I said that last year. I, I, but I'm, just, back I'm just saying it's, it's, it's the top storyline. Mm -hmm. Brady right. Smith, Southie, I'll tell you what, the number four seed in their bracket, Kansas is not a four seed. Talk about getting run in their conference tournament. Yeah. They're down with Hunter Dickinson. They're down with Kevin McCullough. Even if those guys come back, they're not going to be 100% healthy. That bracket is opened up for Purdue. As long as their guard yeah. play is solid, Purdue's good. Before, uh, before we get uh, Shannon back in, I got to ask this question. You know, they're a fourth seed, but this is Kansas oh. and Bill oh. Self, what they, we're talking about here in the Midwest. We said Purdue. We talked about how easy that region seems. Mm -hmm. Do we just dismiss and ignore yes. Kansas? Right now because yes. of their injuries. I mean, their injuries are four seed. You know, that brings up an interesting thing because – Bill Self's a four seed. They get run in their conference tournament. Mm -hmm. No one says anything. Tony Bennett doesn't call a timeout at the end of the NC State game. No one says anything. Rick Barnes gets run in their conference tournament. Kelvin Sampson gets run in their tournament. So no one says anything. John Calipari gets beat, and the world is coming to an end. They, 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 people treat John Calipari and Kentucky differently and they treat every, oh, anyone oh, else. Oh, you know what I just I knew this thing. Oh, here it comes. I just poked the bear. One and done. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Shannon, hold on for a second. Oh, boy. I knew I'd poke the bear on that one. Oh, <laughs> John Calipari and I go back to his oh, days at UMass when I was covering Temple, for crying out loud. I love the man. But as much notoriety, notoriety as he gets. Such a victim. As much victories as he's had during the regular season and stuff like that. The man has one national championship. Yeah, he's underachieved, coach. It underachieved. He's a victim. He has. He has. Definitely. You I got number one Carl Anthony Towns. You got Go ahead, number Shannon. one Anthony Davis. You got number one John Wall. Yeah, well, you, you got Tony Cousins. You, you got that one. You won the title with Anthony Davis. You got one title? You won the title with Anthony Davis. Come yes, on, bro. Just let y'all know, they, they are starting a campaign to fire John Calipari and Big Blue Nation. Well, they, well, he, they, 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 no, 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 no. I'm not saying they should fire him either. They should not fire him, but every game he is trending. Yeah, they're not starting. And their fan base. It's easy on this year. No, no, no. I'm not saying they're firing him at all. That was not one. And they should. They should. They should. They should. Every game is trending. That's what the fans want. Go ahead, Shannon. Go Coach Greenberg. Are you saying John Calipari, with the level of talent and the number one overall draft pick and the top 15 players that he's come to, had come through in the last 10 years has not underachieved? No, I agree with you guys both. I, I, here's I where I disagree both. because the culture of college basketball has changed. The last four years, I'm going to take the last four years, how many freshmen have impact in the Final Four? Not it's, a lot. You not know. a lot. It's – not well, a lot. College basketball, older. get old, stay old, yeah. all right? Retain players, go into the portal, get older guys. Look, John Calipari's got some of the best freshmen. Don't worry, Respectfully, that's not so. answering Shannon's question. Because <laughs> the bottom line is this. The adjustment that is made, he's paid to make the adjustment. Shannon's making a – listen, I love John Calipari. I love him to death. But the yes. just, listen, that's – Why do we judge him? Make that adjustment. Hold on, hold on. Hey, hey, and, um, how do we judge him? How many, times, how many national that? titles does Bill Self have? Two. He's got two. He's got one more two. national champion. Yeah. Yeah. All right. By the way, just to add to you and Unk's you know argument right here, I say, Rob Dillingham, Reed Shepard, two lottery picks coming off the here bench. Here we go. Coming yeah. off the bench now. Yeah, they're coming off the bench. Right? You know, and right. Look, lottery those guys are chance. really talented. But, really talented. But you know what? They better guard the basketball or they're going to get puts popped Puts a lot of pressure. Right.